alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good morning, all. Good morning, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, sorry for the delay. Um, we're just facing some people who are facing difficulties to get parkings. So we might just start a bit late. Uh, I'm Jawahar Al Marhubi, and I'll be your host for the today. Uh, I'm the project manager for JEDEX, and my focus is to focus on the local universities and colleges. Uh, before we start our discussions regarding our upcoming events, Future Skills and HRD Conference and Award and JEDEX Exhibition, my team and I would like to give you a brief regarding the event. Uh, so the Global Higher Education Exhibition has been an Omani event for 22 years. Uh, this year we started with Suha and inshallah we'll be going to Bahrain, Kuwait and India. I would like to invite Amr Abdullah Ba'aboud, our group CEO, to give us a speech on um, an opening speech and talk about the, the advisory board. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and all of our friends. Uh, thank you for continuing to support the uh, GEDEX group of events uh, over the last 22 years. Some of you know, may know the history of GEDEX. It started off as a very small event with around 10 universities in the uh, lobby area of uh, the Intercontinental Hotel a long time ago. Uh, Alhamdulillah, has grown to a much bigger event now with around 200 institutions, uh, local and international, taking part uh, in, this, in this event. Uh, as uh, my colleague Jawahar had mentioned, uh, GEDEX is now in six uh, cities across four countries. And inshallah, with your support, uh, we can go even further, we believe. I would specifically like to thank the Ministry of Education for hosting us in their ministry today, uh, who, are, who, we are meet, who we are meeting on a regular basis to design the event, to be able to give the best value to uh, the students, parents, and to help to transform their lives in education, higher education. The Ministry of Labour also for their support uh, in developing opportunities for the youth and the workforce. Uh, the Ministry of Higher Education, Research and Innovation for the support in helping us to further develop the higher education sector for universities, colleges, students and the country as a whole. Uh, Vision 2040 of course with the sustainable development which emphasizes the protection of human capital uh, and developing its education system. The OAAAQA for the Quality Assurance System for School edu uh, Education, Higher Education in the Sultanate to ensure the continued maintenance of a level that means international standards. The OSET for the uh, helping us to advance education technology in Oman. Then OSHRAM, of course, uh, Oman's HR Society, which is building, building and nurturing the growing HR capacity in Oman. And OPAL with a focus on the human capital development in oil and gas, energy and beyond. I would like to congratulate the six Amani universities who made it to the QS University Ranking for Arab World 2023, which was announced recently. Please give them a big <laughs> round of applause. Big congratulations for Sultan Qaboos University, University of Niswa, National University, the Far University, GU Tech, and Sahar University. This is the exact, exactly the type of thing which we want to see. Uh, we want to see our Amani universities and colleges competing on a regional level, inshallah, on an international level, and this is something which we all support and we're all very proud to see. We will also be celebrating more success at GEDEX in May. Uh, these are the criteria which you can see here, which have been shared with the universities and colleges. Uh, to apply for, including globalization, research projects, camp campus job placements, support of students. Uh, the criteria we've put here uh, will help universities and colleges focus on some of the important criteria when it comes to the QS to also help them further their chances of improving on the QS ranking. Uh, this is open for applications uh, online and we look forward to celebrating in May, inshallah, with all of you. So why are we here today? Uh, as you know, uh, we, are, we have formed the advisory board for this group of events, uh, made up of leaders from within the uh, system, within the higher education training skill and youth system, or those relevant to these uh, sectors, to help to achieve the collective objectives which we all have. Uh, also to help the objectives of the event in relation to exposure, networking, 
branding, uh, knowledge sharing, cultural exchange, uh, higher education, education training is a very important cultural exchange uh, in terms of soft, soft power and, and also political relations worldwide. We're looking to widen our networks. Uh, we're looking for ideas, advice on themes, topics and learning opportunities and activities and also world-class speakers who will be inviting to our upcoming events. In the build-up to our events, we'll be having regular communication uh, with your institutions, sharing ideas. Um, you'll be invited. Uh, hopefully, you can attend the VIP opening ceremonies for all of our events. Uh, and of course, uh, the advisory board will be less listed on our GEDEX website. But as you know, this is more than just an event. It's a platform. It's a driving force uh, for the community where we network, exhibit, organize conferences. A uh, series of events which we have now, awards, and to encourage and inspire to guide policy and decisions. Uh, I also want to specifically mention the upcoming Future Skills uh, Conference in January, which is something very, very important for us and for the country, looking at the skills which are required uh, in the changing atmosphere, changing technology, and how, as a country, we can uh, focus on this and hopefully be successful when it comes to our decisions and also the focus on student entrepreneurship at the exhibition in May. My colleagues will now present on each dedicated activity and zone within the upcoming events, uh, looking at the opportunities uh, within the event to see how we can collaborate together. Uh, before we have an open discussion to have your feedback and we're very open to ideas and to discuss uh, further ideas which you may have. So the agenda, as you will see, we will start off by uh, briefly looking at the Future Skills and Conference happening in January, and then looking at the GEDEX group of events happening uh, from February onwards. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here. And i uh, pass it back to my colleague, Jawahar. Thank you, Amar. Uh, since the year 2000, uh, we were building the Omani Human Capital Development. And the objective of JETEX is to gather all the universities, the, the accredited international and local universities together with the students and parents. I would like to invite my colleague, Amira Musa. This is Amira Musa, um, Trainex lead. Um, first of all, thank you for being here. Um, so I will be giving you a very uh, short brief about Trainex. So what is Trainex? It is an opportunity for all who are seeking um, specialization in technical and vocational or skill-based certified programs. Training institutes play a very big role in the, in the workforce. A training program gives everyone the opportunity to strengthen the skills an individual may have. With proper training and development, weakness can turn into strength and employees can excel. Training helps in skill development, and the need for our is future skill development. So for any inquiries about Trainex, I will be your focal point, and I'll be very happy to hear your feedback, and we're always open for your suggestions. Thank you so much, and now I would like to invite um, my colleague Shogel Reilani to the floor. Hello, everyone. This is Shogel Reilani speaking. Uh, for, and for the first time this year, we're planning to include uh, SchoolX and 2JEDX. The objective of SchoolX would be for private and international schools in Oman to come and promote their educational curriculums and facilities to parents who are to parents to discuss and assess the school suitability for their children. As for the schools, this would provide a great opportunity for them to promote their institutions to potential customers and join the competitive market. Uh, on the other hand, the students, the students uh, joining the exhibition would get the chance to scout the universities and choose the most suitable one for them. Student Enterprises last year was a great success, and so we're planning to introduce it again this year. The, this would provide an opportunity for Student Enterprises to showcase their products, solutions, and businesses. It will also give them the chance to connect with other businesses potential partners and buyers and investors. The registration would be open for school university, for students and universities and school. Um, for any further inquiries about SchoolX or student enterprises, you can always reach out to me. And now I'd like to 
invite Malak Al Malki to present. Uh, greetings, everyone. I am Malak Al Malki, the conference lead at JEDEX Group of Events. Uh, at JEDEX, we have two conferences. The first one is Future Skills and uh, Human Resource Development. That will be held on uh, January 2023. As we know, um, as we know, the world is. Uh, witnessing rapid changes and developments affecting every fact in our life. So it has become essential for learners to upgrade and develop their skills to help them adapt the future ch changes in jobs. Uh, so in alignment with Oman 2040 vision, this conference will bring together government, universities, uh, human resource uh, professionals and students to discuss and have a unified vision to develop an education system to align with the robust labor market. As well, at the conference, we will be deducting a, a, a panel discussion for job seekers to attend for free and discuss uh, to get to and discuss to have the gain uh, and gain the tips and skills needed for their future careers. Moreover, uh, this year at JEDEX exhibition, we'll be having innovation and entrepreneurship uh, conference at Omani schools and colleges. This uh, event will be a leading event in Oman. We are planning to attract hundreds of key influencers, professionals, and practitioners. This conference will explore opportunities to build partnership and seek innovative approaches for high quality innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, I will be the local, uh, the focal point in contact for anyone who are interested to attend any of our conferences. I would like to call now my colleague Raifa to accompany. Greetings all, this is Raifa Nadiri, uh, I'm GEDEX uh, Talks Lead, so uh, I'll be your focal point of contact if you would like to reserve a space at GEDEX Talks. So what is GEDEX Talks? Basically GEDEX Talks is an area which gives uh, the opportunity for professionals, uh, students and uh, alumni organizations plus communities who would like to host their meetings, gatherings uh, or even discussions, events uh, at GEDEX exhibition. So uh, the space will be uh, free of charge and it, they can, um, they can um, book the space for up to two hours uh, on any uh, of the three event dates. So the purpose of uh, GEDEX Talks is um, to create an environment where everyone feels that their, uh, their ideas uh, are valued uh, within their uh, team and also uh, to uh, give the chance for uh, the members uh, to build teamwork and also facilitate uh, creative thinking plus um, like uh, develop uh, the um, professional interactions among their participants. So I would like to invite you to use this place as uh, you prefer. Thank you. Of GEDEX, of course, is a shared of object, uh, objective. Um, we want to see how, how we, can, we can collaborate. So uh, you each have your own, of course, uh, agendas, what you want to achieve as an institution. We want to see how we can help you uh, in, in this role. So. Uh, please feel free. Uh, we can share the microphones with the. Uh, uh, please raise your hand. We we'll give the microphones. Please, any feedback, any input would be really, really useful for us. Thank you. I like the uh, topics that's been uh, given by the ladies. Um, the only thing I see there that uh, Schoolex. I like the Schoolex, uh, but he's mentioned there only promoting for privates and international. Why do we leave our schools behind? Why don't we involve Oman education schools to join this uh, school X? Um, Mohammed, that's a very valuable input. Um, in fact, the way we started to think, it's a new uh, concept added to GEDEX that usually it's the private and international schools which are uh, pro-marketing and uh, we're more than happy. We're definitely going to look at opportunities to reach out to our local schools if they want to use this platform to market themselves and to communicate and meet the visiting parents and students, for sure. This is a very good point and we'll take it up as a note from the advisory input and directors for the schools and it's a very important point what you mentioned and for sure we'll take it up. Yeah. So this is for school X in relation to them having a kind of space to showcase their schools. Uh, to expose and you know hopefully attract new st new uh, uh, students to, to their schools, but for government schools we're uh, uh, trying to involve them within the uh, student 
uh, uh, student enterprises, if there's any projects which they have, which we think can uh, inspire others or can develop to become more um, advanced products or, or businesses, we will try to have them within the student enterprises. And of course, in terms of the government students, uh, government school students, they are all invited to attend the event. So we're working with the Ministry of Education to invite uh, all of the key uh, uh, schools, uh, grades 9 to 12, uh, both to Muscat and, and Sahar, and the same in Gedex and other countries. I remember last year when we had the meeting to discuss about having Gedex internationally and going abroad. And I can see in your plans you have already decided to go with India and Bahrain, Kuwait, which is a good, good move to go ahead. But I hope in the, in the future also to look back into the regional part. I mean, uh, Kuwait and Bahrain maybe within GCC, but also we'd like to see, like in Iran, Iraq, or uh, Egypt, I mean, those are the countries where, as higher education, we are looking forward to welcome students from. Uh, but also from uh, India, uh, Pakistan, and uh, the other part of the world. But I, I would say it's really good move to go ahead internationally, and I hope you have a kind of package for higher education institutions, I mean, to, to collaborate, to go together as one. I don't know, my question here would be, is it only for Oman institutions, or is it open to all institutions around the world? Yeah, thank you. Event, but uh, when we go international, uh, it is open to uh, uh, any top university who we think deserves to be in that exhibition, because of course we're accountable to the local ministries there and to the local students and schools there. Um, uh, in the past, we used to have uh, Omani um, uh, take Omani companies abroad outside of Oman. So uh, we're trying to promote study in Oman, of course, and uh, we always want to put Omani universities first. So this is something which I think we can dis we, we can discuss further how we can have maybe a Omani pavilion, like they have in Gedex Oman uh, UK pavilion US. Maybe this is something we can look at if, if, if it can work. I think it's a very good good idea to, to really uh, promote our men. Um, uh, and looking at other countries as well. Of course, it takes time to build the brand. Uh, like for Bahrain, it will be our first time. Um, uh, in, in Bahrain, we're also looking at the uh, East, East Saudi market, because there's around three cities which are around half an hour to one hour drive to the Bahraini um, new exhibition center there. So we think there'll be a good turnout there. Um, so we're kind of trying to build and not go too far yet. But I think East Africa, North Africa, uh, Iran would be very good opportunities for the future. So not all universities are at the moment allowed to go. So we're trying to discuss to see how we can use the collective power to try to convince, for example, Bahrain has its own accreditation system. And you have respond to is um, we would like to actually exhibit our institution in the countries where we already have the students from. And there are institutions, Oman institutions are recognized in different countries like Syria, Jordan, uh, Iraq. Uh, these are the region where we have a lot of students from. And therefore, and India as well. So therefore, I think the criteria of which country to go in MENA region is the countries where we already have the students and the institutions are recognized. So this will be the, the, the easiest way to, the easiest target uh, students market. And the, um, apart from the, because you have, you, you have mentioned about the accreditation system, because accreditation, uh, I think, is, is more difficult way of, or a difficult criteria, because among GCC countries, we still have problems of recognizing each other. But within, within the MENA region, I think we are, it's easier for us to, to attract the students, because our institutions are recognized in these countries. Um, East Africa is in a very good market and very attractive, and, and, and they are very attractive to Oman. And therefore, again, uh, it's an easy way. We have already established relation with these countries. Um, uh, um, I think we have to investigate the, the, the countries which are recognizing our institutions, and they should be the, the, the target uh, market for the exhibition. I congratulate you to having the different products and clustered together in one in one exhibition, so you have different uh, uh, exhibitions for different market segment, but within the same uh, uh, you know uh, criteria of like education, training, and all that. So I think that's a very smart idea. I only want to ask about to expand about the last uh, uh, event, which is the talk. 
Um, can you expand this, this talk is what it is exactly uh, and how we are going to like benefit from this? Is it like a free talk we organize or you organize? How, how does it work? Thank you. Open universities and colleges are already approved and we already have students from. So that's a very good approach. Uh, for sure, we'll, uh, we'll look into how we can communicate with these uh, countries and try to organize a GEDEX exhibition there. Uh, also, we have requests to organize GEDEX in different parts within the Sultanate of Oman. So that's another area we are exploring and discussing with the Ministry of Education as to some of the universities may want to go to Khasab, for example, to participate and communicate with the students coming in from Khasab. So this is also a possibility and this is something on the discussion agenda, but it is not yet here. We, we just can do two cities now and then we need to plan collectively as to when everybody is going to be ready to take a Oman tour. Uh, on the GEDEX talk, uh, Raifa, do you want to explain it a bit more? As I explained before that, GEDEX talk is uh, a place where uh, like professionals can uh, have their meetings there and uh, their discussions uh, uh, which are related to education and future skills. And it can be reserved uh, by um, like colleges, for example, and then you can host their meetings there so we can discuss, uh, you can discuss more uh, regarding GEDEX itself or anything that is related to education. And uh, it can be reserved like, uh, like two, for up to two hours and then uh, for the rest of the event, which is three days. I'm Salim al Harti, Deputy Vice Chancellor of Sultan Qaboos University. Um, well, I have heard about um, training uh, school ex, uh, student enterprises, uh, GEDEC talks, uh, micro uh, credential, all of these are very, very important. Maybe the way to um, bridge the gap uh, of collaboration between us is just if you allow me, you give me a few minutes to talk about what we are trying to achieve at Sultan Qaboos University, especially in terms of uh, student skills. Will be hopefully the first university in the world to give students their own certificate when they graduate and certificate related to skills. We have built a comprehensive framework of SQU uh, student skills. Uh, when they start with their foundation till they complete fifth year, so that building their competencies, uh, they, it can be you know knowledge skills or practical skills, even behavior skills. Now, uh, uh, all of these are based on project concepts. Uh, whatever skills, you name it, and specialist skills which are needed from the industry, we map these skills from the industry and we bring it to the curriculum, and also life skills and other things in a very practical way. Uh, what we are trying to do at SQ, a student will be graduated with, um, for example, we have a program of 1,000 points where students, they take different uh, skills and uh, each skill has like 20, 30 points. So we can see now they are really competing to get those skills. And what we have created is uh, like a basket of skills where uh, in our framework, we have common skills which will be attained and taken by all students. And we have skills based on student uh, uh, interest and we have skills based on student specialization. And each student, when they join SQ, they'll have skills portfolio. So once they finish the fifth year, they graduate, you'll just be able to click and go directly and get their skills profile. So uh, now there are a lot of details where um, uh, 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 to look into these skills, especially in designing the skills. You know, when you design the skills, uh, then uh, you have to consider all the elements in these skills, including evaluation uh, of those skills and if a student they have attained those skills or not. It's a part of uh, now curriculum bringing those skills uh, to the university uh, agenda. So we have started with a lot of projects at the moment, something like six million uh, in that direction. And, um, and we don't forget, we didn't forget our partners, and you might be one of them, especially in uh, taking um, the, that uh, direction. We have identified 12 institutions in Oman where they'll be able to help us uh, because we don't have enough uh, know-how to deliver those skills. Uh, uh, our competencies are very limited 
in order to, uh, uh, let me give you an example, entrepreneurship skills. So that will have with uh, other institution uh, to help us to do so. Maybe you can be one of them in that uh, direction, why not? My suggestion will be that um, first you start with the letter of understanding with those universities. Then you start with the focus agenda on a certain, just trying to be, be, be close that gap of uh, any uh, institutions. Um, one of the things we are getting a help is uh, support from different companies. Just before coming to this meeting, I was in PDO and uh, we were talking about supporting uh, our agenda, skilled agenda. And um, you can't believe it, uh, the money is available, but the problem is designing and delivering of those skills. So that's the thing really we can uh, work together. Uh, I won't be able to go into the, uh, what are the most important skills, especially when Omar uh, mentioned about future skills. We do have a complete uh, uh, idea of what is needed in coming few years. And we are talking about uh, something like 22 years. And we have done a lot of studies to identify what will be needed locally and internationally. So uh, one of the things which was not clear to me, uh, it was mentioned here, accreditation. And that's my question, can you elaborate on that? then uh, I'll, I'll let you know exactly what we are trying to do at SQ in that direction. Thank you. Uh, this year, um, first time, 2021, actually, we did this thing. We had a lot of interest from uh, university representatives, company representatives, companies like PDO and the leading organizations which are working. And also, I think we have uh, Iptihal here from Oman Telus. Organizations did come forward to contribute and try to collaborate about future skills and now we'll be doing the second event on future skills and what you're doing at SQ is very interesting and probably very important for all of us like uh, attending the conference and the media to know how you are going about the skills agenda. And uh, for sure, many organizations, institutions have a similar kind of a program. You probably are like much more at an advanced stage and spent a lot of resources and money to develop it. Uh, so we'd like to invite you to be at the conference to s share this if possible. We'll reach out to you for that uh, for sure. Uh, coming to the accreditation point, each, mini each uh, Ministry of Higher Education has their accreditation of uh, different universities uh, in different countries. It's not very clear how exactly they're working this out because they have their agendas set separately. For some countries which have a lot of wealth and funds available to send students abroad, they may choose a certain country because they feel that that country may um, give like a, a better prospects to the students. And some countries which do not have so much money may distribute their students to go to different countries. So we've been working with different uh, ministries of higher education. Oman has its own system. So on the Omani Ministry of Higher Education website, you can go and see which are the international universities accredited for different countries, which simply means that the local population is uh, advised to go and study from those institutions because they have been verified for certain criteria, probably like authenticity of uh, certification or the environment or the safety or like you know the possibilities there's different points which they look into same as Oman does and we at GEDEX like we reached about 200 international universities which are allowed to participate here but we get interest from maybe 300 350 universities from around the world and sometimes we have to refuse saying sorry you were accredited before but now you are not, for many reasons. It could be political, it could be social, it could be education, it could be so many things. So same way with Kuwait, they have a different system. So they would say, in USA, these are the ones which are accredited, which means others, the students, local students are not encouraged to go to. Um, Bahrain also has a similar system. India does not have that system because most of the money invested in higher education comes from the parents savings and some through exchange of scholarships. So we can uh, take you through which are the countries, you know, SQ is approved, you know, of course in Kuwait and in Bahrain 
and of course India, but some of the countries, they have a different system. So I'm not sure if I've answered that bit and we can, we can go through and give you the list of approved universities country-wise. Maybe we as private institutions, we are facing the difficulty in like Saudi Arabia, uh, Kuwait. Uh, we, ha we haven't had a problem with Bahrain or UAE, but in Saudi Arabia and Kuwait, they have certain rules. You have to be accredited. And to be honest, I mean, we've spent more than 11 years just to go through those process with Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. Until now, it's not finished yet. So the process, they, they have certain rules which uh, the institution has to be approved locally before it's going abroad. But then they, you have to fulfill all the requirements from those uh, countries to be accredited there. It's not just about uh, sending, um, I mean, uh, to send their students, but also to allow the national students to go abroad as well. So we face that kind of difficulties. That's why we don't have a lot of students. Although we have some Saudi students who are still funded, but actually they came to continue their education without the permission from the government because this is a kind of continuous education, like master degree or others. I hope I explained the issue. Yeah. Institutional accreditation, which is a little bit different, so I can see the direction. One of the issue of being accredited, and it opens to you the market of receiving international students, and that's a one of the criteria of QS ranking. It's not only getting more international students, which it means more income to the university, but it is more than that. And um, yes, I can see that broadening, or what I can suggest is the following. Trying to bring those differences together, uh, you might be surprised, they might be, maybe in agreement with 70% of the criteria of accreditation, the difference is just 30%. So you as uh, a body, you can bring all those institutions together to maybe can be regional in the Gulf, you start then Middle East, then you open it uh, to other countries where they can have unified uh, accreditation criteria. Uh, then it will be very easy for those, uh, any university can apply and get uh, approval yeah move forward also some of the countries like kuwait for example they have course based accreditation so a university is approved only one course or two courses are accredited so they are going into very uh, selective approach as to where their citizens can go and study and what they would study as well this is accreditation uh, it's only aimed, to my best of knowledge, of when you have a transfer of students, where a student in Kuwait, they have covered, let's say, 60 credit hours, then they can come to Oman, then those courses he has taken or she has taken in Kuwait will be considered in Oman instead of starting from zero. Sure. Yeah. Warith Kharousi from uh, Maharat Academy. Um, one of the th main things, I think, um, in Oman and many other regional uh, institutions. The industry and the institutions, uh, there's a lot of uh, gaps in a way. And I think that's a main focus because um, first of all, great, I see what's happening and I think Oman is really getting uh, their act together in terms of universities and uh, SQU here, you can say, uh, coming up with a lot of innovation, uh, national universities. You can look around, everybody is actually doing a great job. Um, but I think the industry connect is the most difficult thing at the moment. And I know a lot of universities like Geotech and uh, SQU and, and, uh, and National University have been trying to connect up with the industry. But the industry somehow um, isn't forthcoming. There are many organizations like PDO, for example, um, Montel and, and others will probably do that, but the rest of the industry in around and also at a lower scale, not, not just the big organizations, I think that connect is still needed. And I think if you can have um, sort of um, educational or uh, scholars uh, and the uh, connect, and I think you've got it, you know, like the Trenex, for example, uh, and then also the, uh, the chat uh, JTAX uh, talks. This could give you a good opportunity to bring in you know, organizations like Oman Logistics Association, OPAL, for example, really to be in that space to connect up with the rest 
of the organizations. Um, so I just feel that maybe you need um, a better focus as well with the industry. So I think the, the universities and institutions are well, re well um, represented here, but I think you need to get the, the industry a bit more connected. 100% worth. Maybe the way to do that is the following, if you can do it. And that will attract a lot of uh, companies and uh, private sector. If you look to the, uh, the strategies or plans of the many of uh, the private sectors, most of them, they don't have even a strategy. Most of them, they don't even, even uh, have a plan. So if you can help them, for example, say, okay, you are invited to come, we'll be assessing you, uh, your plans or strategies, and inject that element of skills and R&D, that will be very good. I can tell you, you'll be surprised, even well-known companies in Oman, they don't have R&D in their agenda or enhancement of skills or competencies. So what you can do, you can come and make it as a free of charge, show us your annual plan or five years plan. Why don't you consider this? Because that will uh, reduce your cost. And uh, you need to talk the language where they want to hear, uh, the language of um, uh, uh, improving the, the product, the language of reducing the cost, the language of being uh, very tough competitors, the, learning, uh, the, le the language of uh, getting the big share in the market. In that way, you'll be able to look at their plan and strategy and inject these type of things then definitely they'll come to you and other institutions and link themselves uh, to these institutions. You can see that one of the reasons we found uh, was, uh, in fact, there are two reasons. The local companies are not yet ready to take risk. They are not really, their risk appetite is very low. So you need really to help them in order to attain certain level of risk appetite. This is number one. Number two is that really you need, uh, but what we found was that they're not willing uh, to invest in anything related to knowledge as far that there is no competition. So you need to come up and create competition between those institutions and telling them if you join us, these will be the benefits you'll get and you can see the improvement. So you link what, whatever you are introducing to the growth of these companies. Definitely then you'll, you'll not need even to do marketing. Once any institution they see this is a very good investment and there are benefits associated to them, they'll come to you. And my perception, uh, having, um, having a skills training uh, academy, I find that the universities want that industry connect. However, they don't put enough resources to make it happen. Uh, and in fact, I've interacted with most of your universities. And what I find, it is kind of like at a peripheral thing, which is the internship. They say, right, okay, uh, we want interns in, in the industry, but they think about just a placement and then let the student find its way and the, as you said, most of the organization doesn't understand what internship is all about and what benefits they can get and everybody's lost. Um, if we can actually uh, get enough resource, similar focus to the educational training, uh, for the industrial training, because you need a direct connection between the industry and the institution. Now, to make it in a very effective program, you need um, an interactive, it's not just a placement. And I've, I've got uh, case studies that we did. For example, uh, Maharat worked very closely with the Man Post for their transformation program and uh, getting uh, graduates to join them. But they gave them special projects, plus the academy giving them the skills. And then over three months and more, they were actually producing for Oman Post, for example, uh, because they did on improvement projects. 
but the, the improvement projects were actually led by the industry and the academy facilitated. And if when you have that partnership or collaboration between an institution or a university with the industry, then you get those gains. And I'm not saying they're not happening in the university, but I think at a lower scale, it needs a lot more because that's where you're gonna get. For example, we are saying uh, we need to push uh, SMEs here. Uh, but it's not really done in a way that we, yeah, we talk about SMEs uh, being uh, developed and um, we need an entrepreneurship culture, etc. But what is the universities doing and actually picking up maybe like 20, 30 SMEs, put them in their programs and to do A, what, a B and C. They're looking more like I've got a, um, a student, a candidate, and then he has to do his four years, what he needs in that four years. They don't look beyond the four years uh, accreditation and then getting their certificate. So I think these are um, my personal feeling. Uh, I've been around um, another last uh, 20 years or so with the industry. There are pockets of excellence, uh, no doubt, but I think what we need to do is cascade that um, successes to other industry uh, at a lower scale because then you can place hundreds of your internships. Now, for example, in Europe and other places in the world, internships are actually taken very, very seriously, like if you look at Germany, etc. Uh, the industry pushes it rather than the universities push it. So the, there's a pull from the industry rather from, the, and here is the vice versa, is the Universities wanting it, but the industry doesn't want it. So I think we need to turn it around. And I think, Nabila, you talked about workshops. Literally coming up with a strategy going forward. Uh, and uh, it shouldn't be led by one university, it should be by all universities. How much capacity can we generate for internships in that way? And I know like uh, the applied sciences universities actually tried it and um, having like a three months um, internship and you pay the student 150 rials, it does something for the, for the organization and they benefit jointly. But it needs to be done well structured. Should be well structured so that there's benefits all the way through. And there are many uh, organizations that are not that professional to take interns. So that has to be taken care of and once you get univer uh, uh, industries taking this on, they will see it is a benefit all the time. So then they do a pull rather than a push. So I just uh, feel that whatever we are doing, and I think a lot of great work you guys have done and uh, going regionally, et cetera. Um, another opportunity is from the SQU, which you talk about this 1,000 points. Rather than SQU doing it, create the right framework so that you get the industry connecting up with some of those units. You know? So if you talk about artificial in intelligence, find an industry that is doing that and say, right, we will give you this space and please the competency for these so many points will come from you as an industry rather than from the college. You create the framework, but people plug and play. That way everybody participates and they can see the benefits of it. And I'm really glad to see there's um, uh, flexibility now. I think the universities are very inflexible when it comes to the, the programs because the higher education actually uh, pushes you to do uh, something which takes years to get accredited. Then if you want to change it a bit, it's very difficult. And in today's world, you have to change uh, the skills according to what's coming through. We, we, we don't know what's happening in the next year or two. So, so a lot of talk here, but I think it needs a lot of focus and a lot more resource put into that connection. And then maybe we'll get uh, things going through. The uh, uh, GTAX talks will be very helpful to bring in people like Ola and uh, Opal to have that two uh, hour space to, to talk with the institutions. Very quickly, the points which were uh, valuable points mentioned by Warif. The way to bring the university or the industry or vice versa, yes, we, it should be pull and push. 
and that's what we are doing at SQ at the moment. Uh, at the same time, if the issue is uh, supporting financially uh, to, do, to enhance these type of skills, we can come up with a clustering uh, way of bringing people on board so that, you know, especially private institutions, they have a lot of, um, you know, challenges and, uh, you know, they are not receiving, you know, a ready uh, budget from uh, Ministry of Finance. They need uh, to bring the students and invest, so it costs them a lot. Uh, by bringing everyone through the framework suggested by Wareth will be a very good thing to do. Now, this is one thing. The other thing, we need to distinguish between internship and training and uh, skills, and that's what we are doing at SQ at the moment. For example, the 1,000 points, we have a lot of skills and other institutions, they come and help us to deliver them. So it's not anymore SQU, as I said, we don't have enough know-how, we are not really competent enough in every skill. So even now we bring people from the industry without, they have experience, no PhDs, no master degrees, just to help us in um, uh, attaining those skills to our students. It's not anymore in our budget, we don't have budget allocated for enhancement of uh, skills. You can't believe it. This year is the first year where SQ is putting really a, a very good budget and helped by the industry for skills uh, enhancement. There is another, a completely different dimension, which maybe you can think of. You know, we talk about training of students and uh, bringing these skills, but we forgot about who are going to train those students. Enhancement of academicians on how to attain know-how to train students with those skills. What we have found, once you prepare the you know, a, a human being, uh, then uh, you won't be able to have a problem when you want to teach your students in those skills, or even be, uh, bringing people from the industry. So that is very, very important. The last thing which we found was that any skill which is not uh, designed well or uh, being assessed, that will not uh, continue. So if you uh, want to sustain the culture of bringing skills to your students and your graduates in different ways, you need really to have a complete performance measurement of those skills. And you need really to have uh, skills designers, okay? So that is very, very important. If you are talking about enhancement skills at national level, try to think who is going really uh, to teach and train those students. We have a shortage of those capabilities and competences in Oman. The only people who can train students are those from the industry. And most of them are really uh, not available, very, very busy. Imagine today if you want to train students with the petroleum industry and gas industry skills. They are very, very good one. Yeah? I'll give you an example. If you want to train people, let's say, in logistics or commuting, where it was there for many years and other things as an experience. But to get Warith just to two hours his time to come to your university and deliver that, it's not easy because those are just few individuals. So if you can focus on that vehicle, it's a driving force in order to train people. What, is, what I have seen, uh, what you have introduced, um, I would suggest that you try to have a database, maybe you have it, okay, of every institution. What are the gaps, what exactly what they want, in that way, you'll understand exactly what Nabila was saying here, understand the other side of the coin, uh, what is exactly needed to uh, an institution. You'll find that most of the skills are common. So in that way, you can bring institution together, saying instead of Geotech and uh, National University or Majani University investing in the same thing differently, and it costs a lot, why don't you come up as a cluster and invest uh, as one unit, that will cost less and everyone uh, will benefit. So it will be a win-win situation. 
uh, thank you so much for uh, this uh, event. I just want to add more about the workshop. Um, there is something called circle tables in some of the conferences and exhibitions. So these circle tables, they are discussing certain uh, issues within the stakeholders. So maybe we can uh, do something similar in JEDEX. So we can um, just tackle on the issues that we can make the stakeholders come together in the circle tables. And in one day, the whole day, they're just discussing how they solve, maybe using design thinking, processing, something like this, but with the all information and data before, of course, and design these kinds of uh, circle tables within, um, with um, a, um, a good process so that they cannot uh, yani get out from the uh, conference or for the circle tables without um, something that they are agree on it and they will uh, implement it. So each year you can see the improvement for all these universities, the industries, um, uh, decision makers in, in the government. So they come together, even uh, the beneficiaries, students or um, uh, workers or academics that they are working in universities. This is one idea we can um, uh, attract people to come and, you know, like to participate in the in the JEDEX. Um, also, um, we, um, we don't want to reinvent the wheel, as they said. So there are a lot of uh, social enterprises here in Oman and also outside Oman. They are doing a lot of programs, for example, in jazz here uh, with me and Youth Vision and all um, a lot of people that they are doing a lot of programs for students and for uh, job seekers and all of uh, this. So um, uh, bringing those people to, to showcase their uh, programs in the, in the, with the university so they hear in, in, um, in, um, in the conference or in, in the sessions about uh, their products, or you come up with creating an ecosystem with them, with the universities and in the in industries. So you play this role. I mean, like you link them together. And I'm, I'm sure that uh, uh, Prof. Salem and he explained for me that area that they are doing this kind of uh, framework for the skills, for example. But there are a lot of things that we can do more uh, about it. Um, regarding to the uh, re replacement, uh, the placement or internship, um, we are focusing on industries, it, big industries and big companies, but we are not focusing on inter, uh, SMEs uh, to hire or to um, uh, um, yani, um, uh, incubate those uh, trainers. And we know that uh, SMEs, they are lacking of uh, uh, human resources because they, don't, they cannot pay for them. So uh, maybe we can bring also SMEs to uh, to have like some of contracting with them so that they can hire those people and they know exactly what they want, what uh, majors that they want from each, uh, from what uh, what universities they they want. So they just go and select and interview those students before they graduate for internship for one year, eight months, seven months, whatever it is. And also we have like part-time job also. We, they can gain skills through uh, SMEs because SMEs is more flexible and they can learn a lot of skills, not only in their majors, but a lot of things that they can learn from it. Uh, and we can link together. There's a gap there and there's a gap in the universities to having these kinds of uh, placements and entrepreneurship. And you can do with this in JEDEX, I mean, like to bring this together. Um, also, NGOs, they, they, our uh, uh, professional organization like Oshram or Obal and a lot of professional organizations, also they can add more about you know, how to, uh, um, uh, to, to, to be a part of this ecosystem. So they can tell you exactly, they have a data, they have uh, professionals from each industry, so they can um, come and, uh, you know, like be part of this JEDEX, uh, strong part of the JEDEX, and they can um, um, you know, like closing the gap or uh, um, doing programs or uh, for, for those, uh, for those uh, um, uh, universities or for the, the, for the whole stakeholders re related. Thank you so much. This is uh, my, my notes and my advices. So, but because I was in the higher education sector in the College of Banking and Financial Studies, uh, I do have like a, a input when it comes to the competencies and skills and knowledge. Since we are speaking about the future, I really hope that next time we have a representative of youth in the advisory board, because we are speaking of their future and the youth are outspoken. I'm glad that uh, Vision, uh, Youth Vision is here to represent the youth, but those kids are outspoken. They have uh, you know, mastered uh, what they would like to say. So I hope that we have a representation. And since I am by default here as an employer to the youth, 
I have also uh, a stake on this. So I observe your graduates. And guess what? Uh, you know, uh, some of those graduates, 20 to be exact, are in uh, the bank at the moment, uh, doing very well. Not all of them are actually on a financial background. Some of them are even chemical engineers. Can you believe it? But we have observed them, and they're ver doing very, very well. So, you know, it tells me something, you know, we have a lot of graduates, different specializations, whether they are in, they are in the right place or not, I'm not really sure, but they're trying to do whatever they can with the reality of the situation. Now, going back to my industry, the banking sector, which is a beautiful, flourishing industry in Oman. In fact, if you are going to uh, consider the research, uh, there are two types of economies, one run by the real economy and one run by the banking sector. And let me just say that the banking sector has a very good milestone in this country. When it comes to funding innovation, it's always the banks. When it comes to funding you know, a lab or something like that, it's always the banks that come into the picture. And we do our feasibility analysis to ensure that the, we are not in a very risky uh, funding situation. And uh, uh, I do admit that in the government there are other uh, funding authorities that provide very good uh, interest rates for those uh, particular, like, such as RAFT and uh, INMA and other pension funds and so forth. So I am a bank and I would like to employ people in particular specializations that concern me. And uh, uh, in, I'm actually doing this exercise. And this exercise, uh, I am very concentrating on something called functional competencies. So in the bank, I do have risk management, uh, treasury management, uh, corporate credit analysis, financial interpretation. And uh, I actually have a senior in the bank and told me, Dr. Fatim, please, I know you're an academic. You'll be very lenient towards the higher education institutions. Can you come to the professional certifications in which they are not accredited? We have been speaking about this accreditation a lot. And uh, you know, I mean, ACCA not accredited, CMA not accredited, ACII not accredited, uh, but the banks want those certifications. There is that national f uh, qualification for framework that is set by the government at the moment in which there is, uh, you know, levels of qualifications that probably will get some you know, points for those uh, individuals who uh, usually what we do is we get the graduate from the university, we see that they have very good behavioral competencies, and then we take them to the uh, professional qualification. So we tell them, thank you, this is wonderful that you are a graduate, distinction, honors and everything, but then I would like you to do a FARAM, a financial risk manager management and would like you to pass the exam. In fact, as I am speaking to you today, I got a call. What should I do? One of the candidates failed. Shall we uh, repeat on our budget or uh, on the candidate budget? So it tells you how much we are spending money on the professional qualifications and what the industry needs. There has been talks about what the industry needs, where we can get to the expectation of the industry. And the industry needs focus, focus on particular specialism that the youth need to be very aware of. And uh, uh, there are universities that are doing very well at it. I have to give credit where credit is due. However, it would be wonderful to have our innovation labs happening in which the youth are involved. In fact, before I'm speaking uh, today uh, to you, I spoke to Dr. Nabil and I told her I really hope that the Innovation Center was not merged with the Ministry of Higher Education, that it was left, you know, uh, idle. So we can finally do a research center in which we have Bloomberg data. Uh, you know, we have uh, some very good ways in which we do research by having statistical packages. I'm not sure how much, mashallah, SQ is doing well in that. You have Stata, EVUs, and you are running correlation. Today, our economy is affected by inflation. How, you know, these variables are correlated together to get out of this situation. People are saying we're not getting out of it. Uh, the Youth Vision spoke about SMEs. Research suggests that we are trapped in something called survival entrepreneurship because we are not innovative enough. I believe in SMEs as you are. But today, as I'm coming today to, uh, in this uh, particular uh, function, my brother told me I already declared bankruptcy for my restaurant. Guess what is the name of the restaurant? Healthy Kitchen. It is a choice people want. They like to go for the burgers and the Safet Burgerat. Burger, burger, burger. So, you know, so that, 
awareness of healthy, that awareness of plant-based, that awareness of real issues concerning our environment. This is November, and people are saying, why it's not cold in November, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, climate change is happening, and yet we are not doing the correlation. Why climate? Carbon emission. SQ, I'm waiting for you. You've been very nice and generous with PDO, but there are other sectors that need to be. You have wonderful girls in SQ. Let me just name them. I was in uh, a woman empowerment session last week. I have very nice names. I think they are your own students. Razan al Kalbani, wonderful. Half of our population is actually diabetic. Uh, we have Tasneem bin Muhammad al-Dawudi al-Haiza al-Midaliya al-Dhahabiya jaizat al-Sharq al-Awsat al-Mukhtari'at wa al-Mubtakirat. Where are those girls going? We have Nuwat al-Tamar, the ones who have done renewable energy, al-Dhahabiya uh, al-Fadhiya. Uh, Tasneem and I have Hajar al-Azri, Intaj al-Waqud al-Hayawi wa al-Asmid al-Adhuya. Where are those girls going? Where they are recognized. Alhamdulillah, Sumaya Siyabi has got the recognition. But when I was in that session, and we have finalized the session, came the uh, media uh, lady, uh, Ms. Nihad Al-Kindi, and she told me that Sumaya got a lot of attention. Somebody really supported her in terms of marketing. And I loved it. Sumaya deserves it. I'm really loving that, that we are giving credit where credit is due and giving a platform for the youth and providing funding for the right causes and getting out of the survival entrepreneurship because it's affecting our economy. And uh, you know, the banks can give funding as much as they can, but when, they risk, when there are risky funding projects, they will put a hold on it. And I'm afraid that uh, to get out of this, we need to be together collective on the thinking process. Uh, so it's time for us to think together, collective. I'm afraid that this is the time where I'm viewing people on a measure, selfishness and selfless. Selfless is when you are making a real impact to economy and community. Selfishness when it's me, myself, and I. And I've been seeing, you know, some people brilliant, smart, but it's me, myself, and I. And no impact, nothing for the youth, not bringing them. Aisha al Kharusi was with me in the last week's session. And she, said, she told me a wonderful thing. She told her one girl, you go, you do, you. She said, Can I take you with me? She said, yes. And she took the girl with her. Now the girl is starting a project and she's invited in one of the radio shows to speak about her experience. We have to adopt people, adopt them, take them with us, bring them, give them a platform. The youth is hungry for this. So one quality that I speak of a leader is listening. And it's very hard for me to listen, by the way, but I'm really, really, really working on that quality. And I hope that all of us does, because those youth have something to say, and they deserve that platform. So I hope that we provide them that opportunity. And sorry, Yani, I'm very critical, but this is how academics are. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Father. I can tell you that we are going into, I'm talking about SQ, a radical change. And I'm sure if we continue like that uh, in three years, inshallah will be somewhere else. And one of the things, exactly what you have mentioned, is listening and working with others. The first thing we, we need to uh, make sure that whatever we cannot do, there, there'll be somewhere or a company where they can, they can come and help us, okay, to do that. Based on that, I'm inviting GTEx and others. I can take the, that decision now to come and use the SQU uh, facilities free of charge, just to help. We are welcoming people. The culture at SQU is changing. You can't believe it. Otherwise, I won't be here myself, because we are requested now to interact with the society at different levels. Okay? Yes, we can compete with others, but we need to collaborate also. So anyone you know that uh, they need the help from SQU is a matter of just call me, Ashdit, and you are welcome, and we'll try to do our best to help because we are there just to connect ourselves with the society and you. Yeah. I've been dealing with Bank Muscat, all banks, PDO. I have completed almost 29 years. I know what is needed from the industry and what is needed from us. Yes, you are right. Uh, the high academic institutions, 
we're just graduating. Now the things, especially after the pandemic, has changed. Yeah, and um, if you look to SQ strategy, a new strategy now, it, it is based on project concepts. Nothing uh, anymore just on paper and, uh, uh, and uh, we leave the industry if he saw what he saw. No, that is, uh, that is um, a history, to be honest. So even I can tell you how many of students we helped. Let's say uh, National um, University. Almost every two, three months, students, they come with the final year project. They want to use electron microscopes. We do it for f free for them. In my lab, they come and use all the electronic mi uh, microscopes free of charge because we know that we are helping Oman as a um, uh, country. So please, whoever you think that they are struggling, they cannot link themselves. Just Google it, you'll find Salma al Harthi there. My mobile phone uh, is there, uh, 24 hours I'm around. And if you find any student who came at SQ and he didn't receive help from us, then I'll be really surprised because we are really trying to do our best. Yeah. So a suggestion would be is that what do we take away from this conversation today? Can we select certain champions or people who volunteer to do certain things, so at least when we take it out from here, there is a next step or a continuity of those ideas. And I've heard a lot of good ideas from a lot of people here, and each one of them need a lot of focus to make it happen. So if we're going to say, okay, thank you, and then we're waiting for the next uh, conference in January, uh, then basically we, we've talked, yes, great, uh, we had lunch and then we've gone. I think we need to say, what did we learn today? Who can do, uh, who can champion A, B, and C in their sort of expertise, uh, subject matter experts, etc. So then as a community, and if like Salem says, you know, oh, logistics, you know, okay, uh, what if I'm happy, I'll be the champion for that. But somebody else who can do entrepreneurship, uh, somebody else can look at um, artificial intelligence. But if we just leave here and not having um, got some volunteers to take it to the next step, it will be just left and uh, we won't get that framework really taking place. A lot of great stuff here. There's a lot of um, golden nuggets which are going around. But for example, the SQU, where they were talking about the, uh, a thou uh, the thousand points thing. Until today, I didn't even know about it. So I know it's new, but we ought to have a, a picture of it. Then somebody say, yeah, you know, we have this initiative up here. Anybody wants to know more about it, come over here. How can you plug and play to that 1,000 initiative? Uh, so it's, it's great. So I would suggest let's take some sort of volunteers to take the things to the next level. So we know that we are focusing on them having the skills. But I think part of the story is missing is post-graduation. Um, um, we have many people, like what uh, uh, Fatin has said, and I think Maryam also said, that sometimes they go not in their specialization. So this information would be very useful for the institutes um, in the uh, higher education to either design, improve, uh, maybe through the, 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 uh, the skill-based uh, exercises that they're doing. So I think also some sort of work needs to be done in terms of collecting data post-graduating. Um, this could really be useful for, for the institute. At SQ is that any graduate will have a time after graduation or just before the graduation of three months to have this type of preparing them to go to the market especially uh, professional uh, certificates. But let me make sure that everyone understand our role here as a higher academic institution. We have a saying that the person who is giving you a passport or traveling document, he's not supposed to give you a ticket. We are not, any, if you ask any academic institution, we are not there to find uh, jobs for our graduates. 
We are there to facilitate, like the government, it is there to put traveling agencies, uh, airport to be ready for travelers, but they don't give them tickets. Yeah, they give them, uh, uh, for us, we give our students uh, certificates, uh, certificates, we try to enhance their skills, and so on and so forth. However, when we talk about what will happen after the uh, graduation, the approach might be different. She mentioned, for example, they need special, unique specialization in the banking industry. Most of our physicists, I'm a physicist, nanotechnologist, most of our, of our graduates, because the way we teach them in physics, they are employed almost everywhere, even in the intelligence. Even in banking industry, our uh, graduates are recruited there. What we are trying to do at SQU is the following, a multidisciplinary approach. I don't have a cash here, but I have a credit card here. I challenge anyone in this room, if you can come up with a project, a real project, which is done by individual. The world is moving into multidisciplinary. It's exactly when you go to the hospital, for example, you have, uh, uh, God uh, forbidden, you have a heart disease, then the doctor will own your problem, but you'll go to the nurse, to the x-rays, to the uh, pharmacist, uh, all of these people, they have different specialties, but they have one common goal, to treat you from your disease. That's what we are trying to do at SQU and I'm sure other academic institutions. Now, specialized in a certain thing is very, very good thing. But the world, the way is coming now, we need to inject a multidisciplinary component to every one of your students, uh, our students or our graduates. I'll give you just a simple example. In two days, what happened? I met uh, a new minister of health. What happens, we were discussing and said, you see, we have very good doctors and they are graduated in a very good universities and so on and so forth. Also, he's under secretary. But we need to enhance the capabilities of doctors because the internship one year, Lihua Barnami Jalim is taking place at SQ for the whole country. And we need to inject a doctor needs to know concepts of management, concepts of uh, business, especially when they buy drugs or uh, things uh, or uh, uh, medical instruments. So what I'm saying here, uh, specialized specialization is very important and that is taking place in all universities. But injecting those competences, okay, where a person will be able to work in different industries and working with others, understanding the language of the other sectors is very, very important. What kind of skills do you need? And, and this question comes from across um, uh, either the ministries or the uh, institutes themselves or uh, even maybe specialized uh, organizations. What I feel is missing is that sort of hard evidence of what are the skills that are needed? Where are the graduates gra uh, being employed and why they were employed in these places? So this would give uh, insight to the uh, institutes in how they can em enhance their uh, programs. And that's what I was talking about. It is the story after they, gr get gra they graduate that would feed into the institutes themselves. And um, uh, we have a feedback from the industry. They say, look, your graduates, sometimes they cannot even do simple thing we ask them. And that is right. So we are trying really to solve that problem. Yeah, and it will take a little bit time. You know, the, the, when we talk about competencies, how many uh, companies in Oman, for example, they do have competencies development? 20 years back, I was involved in PDO with Salim al Harti, my brother-in-law, in development PDO competencies. It was the only one company in Oman where they talk about competencies, uh, competencies and framework. However, now other companies, they have started. And what are competences? Knowledge competences, practical skills, and behavior skills. Okay. So now we have some companies are coming to SQ and saying, look, we have these skills. Do you have students with these skills? We'll immediately employ them. And one of the things, I'll give you just my personal opinion with my son. He graduated, 
this level is in the middle. He's not, uh, I would say, a good student. Always thinking about football. Yeah, he graduated last year. He didn't get a job. From this, which uh, is technical college. Yeah, now it's a university. Yeah. The guy was there, uh, specialization in HR. But he went and he was trained by different industries, four industries. You can't believe it. Two months back, he got offered offers from four institutions at the same time. Just because he received that training, not from SKU, the industry where they know exactly what is needed. So you can say that if you want to enhance employability in Oman, it's, uh, training is the most important thing, uh, thing and of course, uh, skills. Why X percentage of my graduate did not move to the next level? why other percentages did not move to the final level, why X percentage were only selected from this university. Um, I think if we do it across industries and across uh, companies, we would get a wealth of data that would be very useful for uh, the institute. That, that was... Maybe, maybe. And then prior to that, a principal in the UK. Uh, I was educated at Imperial College uh, in London, and um, I just want to reiterate, really, what the lady was saying there. So in the UK, all of the universities, after the students graduate from university, they will um, survey them, find out where they are, whether they're in jobs, what they're doing, how much they're employed by, you know, the salaries, etc. And that is all published to uh, open publication. So students who leave school or, or I'm educating them in school, then will aim to go to certain universities to maybe study certain courses because they can actually see the statistics around where their students are then placed, what sort of employment they go into. So um, it's actually run, uh, predominantly it's listed in um, kind of newspapers, so kind of that, but it's the, every university puts their data into it, and then they're kind of ranked on different kind of um, employability kind of levels or satisfaction levels for students as well. They kind of test the students to see whether they're happy at university, all of those. So there's different kind of levels um, that the students are kind of questioned on whilst they're at university, post universities, there's lots of kind of following up. Um, again, I might be being um, just ill-informed, but it sounds like that's the sort of system that, that would be really useful um, that, that you could kind of, you know, look at uh, investing in here. And there'll be lots of um, providers who can provide that for you, uh, I'm sure. And you wouldn't have to run the surveys yourself necessarily, but just kind of buy into that service or high management. And uh, also, Ministry of Higher Education conducts survey, graduate survey, uh, every year for a certain category and certain years. You came across this when you were in the College of Banking, yeah. So it is done, and uh, it is, um, actually, it's an eye-opener for the higher education institutions and even the industry itself to see what type of skills needed or even programs, not the skills. If we graduate an accounting person and go and work in different industry, then what type of skills or what type of a program requires? In addition to that, the graduates are called on advisory board. So it's not only the industry. Even the alumni, they come on advisory board and they talk about their experience and they give feedback on the programs offered in organized in higher education institution. And even sometimes they suggest programs. And sometimes these programs are not coming only from academics, not the industry, from graduate, because the graduate being a student, and now they're working in the industry and they know, I won't say better, but they have an informed decision or judgment on what they have or what they want to be or something that they didn't have it before, but they see that it is like skills, maybe problem solving, critical uh, skills, uh, critical thinking or other, or even comprehension sometimes, even the way that they comprehend things and, and analyze, this is maybe, it, like lacking in certain, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's lacking, but maybe they don't know how to use it or how to put it in use in, in, the, in the work, transferring skills, that's I would say, transferring the skills that they have. So it is, it is a practice. What we're doing today is really good, but 
I, I think we, we, we need, what is the intake of this? How much we learn from each other? I know we are doing this, but then we need to put it in practice in order to benefit uh, from such discussion. And round table really will help. I'm, I'm sure it will help. Thank you very much again for inviting me for this valuable discussion. Thank you. You take decisions, always those decisions are very, very uh, solid. Uh, and also, uh, now the country started talking about, from there you'll be able to know the position in Oman, and you take it from uh, top down, and you are trying to identify skills needed uh, by looking to the uh, indices. It's very, very important. If you do that, then you'll get uh, support you, because you are satisfying uh, national uh, requirements. It's uh, really very, very important. If you look to the innovation index of Oman, is low. Uh, technology index of Oman is low. So all of these, there are certain skills needed. One of the things which maybe you are doing it, but I didn't see it, is the digital skills. Uh, at SQU, we brought Microsoft, Wiley, and Coursera. They have plenty of uh, platforms related to skills, student skills. And these are very, very important when you talk about future skills. Uh, you know that people are talking about artificial intelligence, uh, uh, blockchain technology, nanotechnology, internet of things, big data, uh, smart cities. All of these are really uh, very, very important. They do have platforms where you can collaborate with them. And the good thing, most of those platforms are paid by the government of Oman, but not exploited fully by academic, high academic institutions. And a lot of these uh, programs are even free, but not marketed enough so that high academic institutions will benefit from them. So you can link yourself as an interface of promoting these type of things when it comes into digital uh, skills. Now, one of the things, uh, when we talk, let's say, when we talk about uh, nanotechnology, it's very expensive. It's my field, and um, uh, sometimes it's not easy to have very advanced laboratory and compete with the other universities. So what you can do is the following, bringing universities, they share together the cost and having a single lab or purchasing uh, uh, a microscope. One electronic microscope, we have scanning electron microscope, uh, transmission electron microscope, microscope, uh, channeling uh, electron microscope, a lot of them. But they are very, something like uh, a single microscope, an advanced one, one million or many reals. Maybe only SQU have something like uh, 10 of them. Other universities, they cannot afford buying that. So, but they can purchase these type of uh, things together. And everyone will be utilizing, because the equipment are not utilized 24 hours in my university. So they can share the cost where this is very, very important. Then you can enhance uh, skills related to technologies. There are things really where universities need to work together to reduce the cost, but everyone will benefit. The missing element is there is a body to bring this university together. So that's the way uh, different institutions can work and say, look, SQ can contribute in this, national university can do this, Omajan, share together and work together. Everyone will benefit. So in that way, we'll be able really to say, yeah, we are thinking uh, widely uh, at uh, national level. And uh, we know that uh, we can see the uh, industry is moving very fast. So if you compare education systems and the industry, you'll see total different directions. Industry is going very fast, education is going very slow. Uh, I should admit that a few of universities here in Oman, they're doing very well. Um, they are ready to adapt, agility is there. Uh, we have a problem, I think, uh, majority of the university here they uh, follow certain standards or curriculums from international accreditations, and there is no adaptability at all on the future skills example. Uh, Oman Vision 2040, we talk about it, it's been published for quite some time now, 
but you don't see if what the university say taking the documents, put in practice, ready to you know occupy students and so on. I think that's a big big problems because majority of university here in Oman they are very much depending on the certain structure of curriculums, delivering programs, structure by somebody sitting on, on uh, Thailand or in the islands, you know, and, and deliver here, which probably doesn't fit for purpose. That's one. The other thing is that I see, uh, I have learned this from the Southern University in uh, Europe, that they have research centers in the university. And within the research centers, they invite companies, you know, big companies, to have a space in. So all the research center is done through uh, within the university. So PDO or Oxy or whatever it is, company can rent the space and be there doing the research center together. Uh, I think that's a very, very uh, interesting uh, story to tell. Uh, the other part also of the discussion, I think, is that uh, university here, majority are doing uh, you know, training. They train, you know, they're giving educations. But the other part also is missing, uh, you know, R&D is missing, innovation is missing, uh, so because it's all bounded in what the triangle is like. Uh, and all of these changes uh, we are talking about, uh, you know, we are not doing enough, or is missing, uh, skills are missing and so on. We also need decision makers. Uh, who are the decision makers really? So decision makers to be on this table probably sometimes is very important. A government, I don't know, is it a higher education, is it the minister, who does, you know? Somebody need to have a say on the changes. With the national priorities and strategies, and each higher education institution, they have their own strategic plan and they have to fit and be aligned. So there is a list of requirements from Ministry of Education and Oman AAA QA because they have the listing requirements uh, and licensing and approval of our programs. So I can assure the audience and the country from me being as a reviewer and being a person who develop also programs, I know that this program they go through a thorough process of approval. So it's not like someone outside bring these uh, programs and we take them on board. I think you would agree with that. I just want to actually, yes, and because you said actually very you know, critical actually a statement that majority of the universities uh, bring the curriculum from elsewhere and implementing here and they're not flexible and not relevant to our context. This is an absolutely, uh, utterly uh, not an accurate statement. First of all, universities are completely independent in their curriculum and in their designing of the programs. They have nothing to do with the uh, external organizations, though we have relations and academic collaborations that is really up to the, the choice of the universities to have these sort of affiliations for different uh, exercise in different academic uh, purposes. But uh, I can assure you, as uh, Ms. Nabila is saying in here, if the curriculum are not flexible and not adaptable, and if they're not relevant to the context of Oman, for example, they will die. They will not survive. So therefore, the innovation is happening in a very big time, actually. And that's, again, uh, as uh, <laughs> we're all saying that, because we are not connected together, we don't know what's actually happening in the universities. Um, in innovations, entrepreneurship, new projects, this, all these new entrepreneurs that's coming up, they actually are a result of the university's activities. Extracurricular activities in the universities are producing a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of innovations in the country. But unfortunately, they are not, uh, you know, as we said earlier, maybe not recognized and also not connected with the, with, the, with the society. And also when we are very limited in our cycles, we claim that this is not happening. Actually, a lot of things happening in the higher education are nuclear of the, of the knowledge, of innovations, new ideas, and these youngsters are amazingly doing a lot of work in the institutions, and uh, many of them are actually successful, but uh, maybe they're not highlighted in a society in some way or the other. Thank you. We're very happy to work with them, to expose them at the event. So anyone who can put us in touch, uh, our team is ready. Uh, and to connect them with, 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 with businesses, with other organizations, uh, we are there. And uh, Youth Vision um, idea of uh, circle, I think she called the circle table, something like this. I think it's a very, very good thing which we can try, um, I think she's left now, I'll try and catch her, but to talk about uh, what, I, what themes we can have on these tables, on these round tables, and you know, what changes we can make uh, through these networking and events and ideas.
Uh, so please enjoy and thank you everyone. Good to see you again. Shukran. <laughs>